so let's talk through every single Space Marine vehicle unit and how they're shaping up in-game right now. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're talking Space Marines, and in this video I thought we'd talk through the Space Marine Motorpool, make maybe a slightly arbitrary list of how strong each vehicle is in-game, and talk about some strengths, weaknesses, and options that might make it stronger in certain detachments. I have already made a counterpart infantry video to this one, so feel free to check that one out after. Space Marines certainly have a lot of good vehicle choices in Warhammer 40k, and I feel like at least compared with previous editions of the game they're in quite a good spot, lots of units that are solidly usable and good on their own datasheets right, as opposed to maybe in 9th edition with the core keyword, lots of things just didn't really see the light of day very often. As a bit of a fun video to talk through each Space Marine vehicle, I thought I'd try and put them in a rough ranking from weakest up to strongest, as a bit of an excuse to talk about how much value they have in game and how they stack up against each other. For this video I'm certainly only doing the Space Marine vehicles from the core codex, there's plenty of those to be getting on with, never mind delving into all the divergent chapters that get loads more, and even within these ones I have grouped a couple of like ones together that I feel I have a similar sort of power ranking. As always with tier lists, and even more so with these ones where it's ranked individually, this list is very very arbitrary, and any one choice could certainly be shifted up or down a good number of places, and I really wouldn't dispute that too much. It's kind of hard to give individual placings to the units that do very very different things in game, how do you weigh up say a transport vehicle versus a anti-tank damage dealer, and in 10th edition that becomes even more the case as things are further complicated by units rules, each giving them unique roles. I feel like after a couple of balance passes and the codex release, Games Workshop have actually done quite well to get these vehicles more balanced than they've been in a long time as well. There certainly are the same sort of choices that do tend to get picked in tournament lists a lot more than others, but most of the weaker stuff I'd say really isn't that far behind, and just because I've ranked something low on this list doesn't necessarily mean that it can't have a strong place in an army, particularly at a more casual level, and if you're not trying to stomp grand tournaments or anything. The other major factor like this, which I'm sure some people will mention in the comments, is that detachment choice absolutely changes things around for certain vehicles. This list is aimed to be a bit more of a general purpose type list for stuff that tends to crop up in tournament armies, maybe irrespective of detachment, but just about any detachment choice in the game could change things around. For example, transports are generally going to do a bit better in Firestorm compared with others. Anything static like artillery could do a bit better in the Siege Force than otherwise and something to deliver big damage combos if the detachment has one could be big as well, say for example land raiders delivering a fire discipline combo in Gladius. I try and mention a few obvious things as we go along, certainly the Iron Storm Spearhead tends to be awesome for big vehicle damage dealers, with the lethal and sustained hits combos that you can do with that. In any case though, let's jump into it, talk through the rough strengths and weaknesses of each unit, some detachment synergies that might be a bit more standout than others, and roughly why I've chosen to rank them where I have. Let me know your thoughts if there's anything that you think that I've grossly underestimated or over -egged. I always look forward to hearing other takes down in the comments below, so keep them coming in. Starting out though, the unit I've chosen to rank at the bottom in 25th place is unfortunately the Hammerfall Bonker. This one was certainly niche before the Codex update came out, though I had heard tales of some people using it to some unlikely success, but since the Codex dropped, Games Workshop I feel kind of ruined it. It's a static bunker that does have some genuinely very good defence, 14 wounds at toughness 12 with a 2 plus save, gets a bit of overwatch for free with its defensive arrays, plus some big super crack rockets. This thing I did think had an interesting enough niche with randomly firing overwatch with heavy bolters and things, and you used to be able to fire that multiple times per turn, but Games Workshop changed that so it's only once per turn free overwatch, rather than getting to fire multiple times like previously. Between that and being completely immobile, it just feels like a bit of a liability really, means that you can't reposition to get line of sight on things if critical, and depending on the terrain setup, you might have some pretty limited arcs of fire. On top of that, the damage output just isn't really all that great, only hitting on a 4 plus doesn't help against, say, stealth and modifiers and things, though I guess if it's static it could be hitting on 3s in the Anvil Siege Force, not that that's particularly competitively run or anything. Overall, despite sturdy defence, I feel like Games Workshop probably could have kept the Overwatch rules the way they were. I guess they could be a little bit even oppressive against lighter armed infantry on very open boards, but people weren't exactly spamming this competitively. Moving on, next up I've chosen to rank the Firestrike Servo Turret, maybe being a little bit harsh here to the Primaris Point Defence, but ultimately I feel like this one just really struggles with just not really doing anything that the Space Marine tanks and vehicles do better while basically pretty much not being able to move. For 75 points, it doesn't have the worst damage output in the game, 
I personally take the last challenge, which gives you two shots at ballistic skill 2 plus, strength 10 with twin linked and a last cannon type profile besides that. The auto cannons just seem a lot less exciting, only gaining one extra shot for all the downgrades. And its special rule comes with a 4 plus overwatch, which I think is okay, but perhaps only really gets there if you've got two of the turrets, and even then you're only averaging around about two hits with that twin links profile on one vehicle, the overwatching, maybe a little bit borderline for one CP perhaps. I think it does come with a lot of downsides unfortunately. Strength 10 stops it being very effective against toughness 11 or higher, even if it does get twin links. Only getting a 3 inch move means that it's virtually immobile and might struggle to fall back even if it wants to. It's way easier to kill with Plasma or Melter, only having Toughness 6 versus other Space Marine tanks and things. Though with all of that I feel like the lack of mobility is perhaps the biggest thing. Maybe you could justify one unit in your home field, but I might not want more than that I think. It is kind of frustrating that this one doesn't get a bit more from the Anvil Siege Force, given that it's not heavy and already hits on a 2+. That does seem one of the detachments that should be good for it on paper, but in reality isn't really. I might be being a little bit harsh on it given that the damage output isn't awful, but just feels like a unit that you really don't need compared with tanks that can move far far faster and do add up to a similar sort of damage output without the downsides. Next up, and I feel like already taking a significant bump on power compared with the Hammerfall, are the Stormhawk and Storm Talon. Even though I've ranked these quite so low, I still wouldn't say they're unusable or anything, but overall just probably not going to add up to the best choice. These flies I think just pay far too heavily with their damage and defence for their mobility. In particular they're just very easy to take down with any mid-strength enemy shooting, and their damage output just isn't enough to justify that. The Storm Talon might get a twin linked assault cannon and twin las cannons that are better against ground targets, and the Stormhawk I feel like has more impressive stat lines for its damage dealing, but has the disadvantage of needing to start off the board and only come in turn 2. Overall, between all that, I think I'd usually just prefer just about anything else, really. Loads of the Space Marine tanks are very good damage dealers, which doesn't really help them, and the Storm Speeders might have similar sort of damage outputs and also bring nice buffing rules to the table, and don't have the disadvantages of flyers having to start off the board or interact worse with terrain. I guess one quirky use might be the Iron Storm Auto Explode stratagem. In theory, you could throw a Storm Talon up the board, perhaps do a bit of damage, and then be in a position to deal loads of mortal wounds if the enemy pops it. Still almost certainly not the best idea, but could be kind of fun. Next up I've chosen to rank the standard Dreadnought, 135 points for a slow moving space marine walker with one heavy weapon and actually a fairly punchy power fist. It does get the same attack profile as the Redemptor Dreadnought that's all the way off at 200 points, so getting that for 135 isn't awful. Otherwise though I wouldn't say that either its damage nor defence are particularly outstanding. So the main selling point is the reroll ones aura for nearby infantry, which doesn't really have a lot of optimal targets within the Space Marine army. Might be nice for some things like Centurions, but they already get the rerolls to hit, so it's not good for them. And it doesn't stack with Oath of Moment either. So if you do have really meaningful infantry damage dealers, they might have already got rerolls to hit anyway. On top of that, the slow move of six inches doesn't really combine well with actually getting that melee into combat. And overall, I just don't really think it compares very well with the other Dreadnought damage dealers, the Redemptor being really quite an efficient unit, and if you want the shooting version of the Dreadnought, then the Ballistas just does that so much better, and for only 5 points more. Next up, and a unit that I seem to have been surprisingly harsh to, is the Rhino, which I've ranked down at 20 seconds. I really am kind of in two minds as to where this should be ranked, as in general I honestly think there's nothing wrong with the unit profile itself, it's just within Codex Space Marines Games Workshop have limited what it can transport so much that it's only locked to a few given units that are rarely taken competitively, meaning that it's rarely going to be the right choice. For strength it is tough for the cost, it's got firing points on top to open up with some heavy weapons, say from a tactical squad or devastator squad embarked, it can auto repair a bit and it does have a good transport capacity. I'd say the main problems is that it's just got nothing that is particularly exciting to transport. Tactical Marines I still think are solidly overcosted. They either need to gain a little bit more threat or go down in points a bit. And I guess Devastators could be an option, though I sort of feel like you might either just want them as static fire support or to be jumping out of a Razorback and get some big wound rerolls. I guess a few of the Divergent chapters could have a little bit more use. Maybe some Firstborn Crusader squads for Black Templars or Space Wolf Power Armoured Infantry. But I've still very rarely seen Rhinos get much play in Space Marines competitively. For the core codex, I think they should have just let it transport the Primaris as well and just remove that dividing line. And if they had, I would have ranked it a fair bit higher. In a similar vein, I've also chosen to rank the Razorback around here. 
It provides a little bit more threat with one solid twin link last cannon shot plus a hunter killer missile, and I'd argue that it comes with perhaps a bit more of a meaningful supporting rule, meaning that say if you had some multi melter devastators or similar, you could use this to deliver them into closer range and then get to re-roll the wound roll, which is kind of big for strength 9 melter weapons trying to take down tanks. At least on paper that combo feels like it's not awful in Firestorm, though probably still not on the same sort of level as things like Eradicators and Repulsors. Otherwise it definitely has its trade-offs compared with the Rhino, it's more expensive, no firing deck, no self-repair and a lower transport capacity. Overall I'd put them on a similar sort of level though depending on what you want. I'd rate the Razorback a little bit stronger for Devastators perhaps, whereas the Rhino good for if you really wanted to transport tactical marines around, or Divergent Chapter more close assault infantry. Next up I chose to have rank in 20th the Storm Raven gunship, 240 points and I feel like after the Space Marine flyers it probably is the strongest right now. Far less easy to take down with minus 1 damage built into a 14 wound toughness 10 flyer. It still has massive movement and the hover keywords to allow it to start on the board and can potentially get a unit right up in the face of the enemy army right from turn 1. 20 inch move and then dropping a unit out really is quite big and scary. Beyond that it does pack a fair few heavy weapons, the hurricane bolters are genuinely quite fearsome anti-horde firepower, then it has three other harder hitting heavy weapon systems to try and put some hurt on tanks or elites. Overall I think its damage isn't awful for a mainly transport unit. For downsides, the minus 1 damage might not matter all that much against truly high damage weapons, things like Necron Heavy Destroyers with damage 6 Gauss or Tau Railguns and things, and even with the minus 1 damage on it, it's not really that tough for the 240 points that it is, and you've got a big incentive just to fly it straight up to the enemy lines where it's going to be taking some pretty maximal damage dealing in return. As a flyer, it can't really help with objective things all that much, I feel like perhaps its biggest problem is competition with things like Repulsors and Land Raiders, both of which are pretty excellent right now, and I don't think that the very long move and drop is going to be quite enough to tempt people to take this guy instead. It is one that gets on very well with the Firestorm detachment though, Strength 5 Hurricane Bolters are quite fun, as are Strength 10 Twin Link Multi Melters. Again I would say it's one of the units that's really not all that far behind other options, but it's just a bit overcosted compared with Land Raiders and Repulsors. Next up I've chosen to rank the drop pod in 19th place, 70 points to basically get a squad of 10 man space marines to deep strike and they can do so turn 1, basically paying points for absolutely knowing that your firepower is going to get exactly where it needs to, unless the opponent's been able to screen very very well. Compared with the other transport variants it can take primaris marines as well, so it's fair game for things like hell blasters or infernus marines. Having a mobile drop pod on the board can cause issues for the opponents being able to hide in melee with it, but it can also be useful as well, potentially scoring secondary objectives or even primaries, it does have a little bit of objective control. For weaknesses, the 10 man capacity is a bit restrictive for squads with characters, either you need to drop a model in the squad or to run them without character support, which is a little bit sad, perhaps meaning that it's most efficient for things like perhaps a squad of Infernus Marines to try and get in range in the Firestorm detachment and then have Vulcan standing elsewhere on the board to buff them with the rerolls when they come in. Again, I think it's a bit too high points cost for general purpose use as well. 70 points really is a lot and it has to transport a lot to justify that big premium. And most would say that that trade-off just isn't really worth it, not compared with other transport options as just mentioned. Next up in 18th place we've got the Storm Speeder Hailstrike. This one's 130 points for the anti-infantry variant of the Storm Speeder. This one spams out tons of strength 4 and 5 AP0 shots meaning that it's got genuinely okay damage against hordes and things, but against anything heavier it's really not going to do much at all, which I think is a big weakness if you happen to be playing, say, Imperial Knights, or more heavily armoured things like enemy space marines or custodies. The big selling point is its AP debuff, one unit that you shoot it gets extra AP when the rest of your army shoots that same target, but now it only works on things that aren't monsters and vehicles, and it means that it's just even more niche in any matchup that goes really heavy on those. Previously I would have ranked it a bit higher when that rule could work on monsters and vehicles, it meant that it would have genuinely good use in that kind of matchup, but for 130 points and pretty bad damage output on its own and not really that great durability, I feel like most of the time people would pass this up, unless they're very very confident they're going to be going into a meta where everyone's running say Terminators or Elite Infantry or something. Next up we have the Invicta Tactical Warsuit, which I think is interesting, 
but the numbers just aren't quite good enough in its favour at the moment, I think. It's 140 points for a Toughness 8 Walker with 12 wounds, which does mean it's more fragile than most vehicles on this list as well. Things like Plasma and Melty Guns dealing with it far more easily than other Walkers and Tanks. Its damage output does have some solid enough lighter infantry killing at range, with either an Auto Cannon or that Incendium Cannon. It hits surprisingly hard with Punchy Strength 14 melee with that Invicta Fist. It could be interesting enough for Tank Shock as well. I wouldn't say that its damage output is enormously standout though. I'd say the main draws to taking it are the scout move as it gets to scout 8 inches before the game. And it's got a slightly quirky return fire rule where if you shoot a faux boss unit that's close to it, then it gets to shoot the thing that just shot them. With the scout shenanigans, I think it is genuinely kind of usable, just maybe feels like one that you really need to work to get the most value out of it. As just for a direct damage contest between it and most of the other space marine vehicles and things, it's going to lose out. Its shooting just really doesn't punch up to threaten heavier stuff all that much with high saves or high toughness, and it is pretty easy to kill for the points. Next up in 16th place, I've chosen to rank the Predator tanks. 130 points for either variant now. I feel like they're generally just remaining in their place as okay gun turrets that are good against their specific targets. The Annihilator good against heavy tanks and vehicles and things with its reroll ones of damage and the Destructor with its boosted AP against anything else and higher rate of fire. They also get some Hunter Killer missiles as well to help front load damage a little bit too early in the game. In general, with these points cost, I genuinely wouldn't say that they're particularly bad units, just probably a little bit outcompeted by other choices in various different ways. In a damage comparison of different units I did on the channel a little while back, the Ballistas Dreadnought, Gladiator Lancer and Repulsor Executioner all compared pretty favourably in terms of damage output from the Predator Annihilator, Plus, besides the Lancer being a bit tougher for the cost as well. For that reason, I put them as not the most optimal choice, but really not that bad if they're what you have available. They will do some good work against their given targets, and I feel like there might be a little bit of underappreciation for some weird mixed loadouts as well. Say, for example, a Destructor with Last Cannon Sponsons really isn't too bad as an all rounder. The Annihilator does get on pretty well with the Ironstorm Spearhead as well, making very good use of its re rolls, maybe on the main twin linked Last Cannon gun, if that one happens to miss. Next up, we've got the Storm Speeder Hammer Strike at 15th place. This one's 150 points for the Storm Speeder with the missiles. This one gets a bunch of Strength 9 firepower with damage D6. The missiles at slightly longer range, and then the big Melter Destroyer needing to get into 18 inches. It is at least quite fast to be able to get into that range, though, and it gets to strip the benefits of cover for one unit that it manages to target. Certainly not a useless thing in 10th edition, with cover being fairly easy to obtain. At 150 points, I would still say it's a little bit on the pricey side versus other options. I feel like its damage output is okay, but with the need to get into 18 inches to really get good, and 9 inch melter range to really shine, it's going to have issues. As a storm speeder, it might be fast, but it's really not all that tough if it does get that close, which is a bit of a problem. And the stripping cover thing is nice enough, just maybe not enormously exciting on a unit that's 150 points as a primary bonus. Overall, between all that, I'd rank it a bit lower than the Thunderstrike, which provides a pretty devastating buff against vehicles, and also can make its attacks at longer range without having to get up super close and risk a big punch back. Maybe in a not too dissimilar vein, we've also got the Gladiator Valiant, a rank that at 14th place at 150 points. Between its twin Last Talons and the Morty Melters, it strikes with a bunch of Strength 9 and Strength 10 shots that are good for dealing with enemy elites, or maybe punching up to enemy heavies, Though with the multi melters it will be wounding things on fives. It gets a plus one to hit against the closest enemy monster or vehicle with the last talon, and gets a few secondary weapons for a little bit of volume fire. Though again I'd say just similar to the Storm Speeder Hammer Strike, it doesn't really get good unless you get within 9 inch melter range, which is very very close, and it's just pretty bad threat in general unless you get within 18 to trigger the multi melter sponsons. Again it just doesn't seem to be a preferred platform for tank killing compared with lots and lots of other good competitors, it might get on kind of well with things that allow it to advance and shoot to get into closer range like Gladius or Firestorm. It does get a bit better in Black Templars as well which can bolt on an additional multi-melter. Next up and ranks sort of mid-table in 13th place we've got the Impulsor. This is nice and cheap at 80 points now and is a fairly flexible transport with a 6 transport occupant slot with a 12 inch move and gets a firing deck so you can use it as a gunning battlefield taxi or some Hell Blasters or Infernus Marines or something. Overall, I feel like as a transport, there's a fair bit to like. Its durability, I'd say, is good enough for 80 points. 
and you do have a bit of flexibility. You could get the option of the top hatch missile, which I think is nicely general purpose and gives it some okay damage of its own, or swap that out for a shield dome for insurance against better AP. Its special rule allows it to advance and drop, which is nice in Gladius or Firestorm once more. And again, like the Gladiator Valiant, I feel like this one is definitely a lot better in Black Templars. It gets to trade out its stubber for an extra multi-melter, making it genuinely lots more threatening. And also I'd say they have perhaps one of the single best units for it to transport in the Sword Brethren. You can have a high value punchy unit of those with an attached character, and it's quite a nice battlefield taxi for getting them up the board and into melee range. Otherwise Hellblasters might be a nice enough choice, or you could just use it to cart around some high objective control troops. Perhaps one of the biggest gripes for this one is that it can't transport a 6 man squad of blade guard plus an attached character, as otherwise it would be an interesting option for those guys as well. It's just a bit unfortunate that they have to be brought in in squad sizes of 6. Beyond that I'd say that the numbers aren't quite so outstanding that you'd really want to spam them. A little bit of a luxury choice to get one unit some good movement into the midfield. Beyond that you're probably over investing a bit in mobility for the most part. Still though very nice to see this a lot more usable than it was. Still not very frequently played in competitive lists, but doesn't seem awful for things like a Hellblaster, Battlefield Taxi, or the same for Sword Brethren. In 12th place, I've chosen to rank the very, very fighty Brutalis Dreadnought. 175 points for the big nasty fighty Redemptor with the Fist or Talons, plus the Multi Melters and some Stubbers on top. It does punch very hard in combat with 6 attacks at Strength 12 and Twin Links. You get to choose between having the option of a sweep attack or a few anti-infantry gunshots. It also gets mortal wounds as it impact hits as well and could be an interesting option for tank shock. You potentially could be hitting with a ton of mortal wounds before it even gets to swing. Otherwise I'd say it's fairly tough with its 2 plus save. Nice enough for armour of contempt but not quite as tanky as either the Redemptor or the Brutalis point for points. And twin multi melters definitely aren't nothing. The reroll wound rolls helps them be a better threat against vehicles, and it will want to get close anyway. Perhaps for weaknesses is that it's a bit predictable, very dependent on just reaching combat to have any value whatsoever. It could well be screened by chaff, which it wouldn't enjoy. And it's likely to be taking at least a turn of enemy firepower before it gets into combat, unless they move forward very quickly. In tournaments, it does seem to be the least frequently played of the Redemptor chassis, but I certainly have seen a couple used in competitive lists that have done well in tournaments. I think it's perhaps quite nice in the Gladius in particular, with access to things like Advance and Shoot and Advance and Charge, delivering all that melee muscle at double speed. Next up, in 11th place, I've chosen to rank the Land Raider Crusader. In general, I do think that Land Raiders are excellent, though this one is the most niche, and it really just comes down to transport capacity and guns. In general, in 10th edition, Land Raiders are absolutely great, very tough and somewhat dangerous in their own right, and their Assault Ramp special rule means that you get to move and then drop a unit that can then go on to charge, often things like Aggressors or Blade Guard, or other specific chapter damage combos. The Crusader itself is, I guess, the toughest one per point, as it's the cheapest at 230, and it does have some serious anti-horde firepower with all those twin-linked Hurricane Bolter shots, though they're just not going to do much to punch up against anything with high saves or high toughness. The main reason that I'd say to take the Land Raider Crusader out of the three of them is just literally if you've got something that can't be transported in one of the others due to the amount of slots it takes. Perhaps specifically aggressors with both a captain and also the Apothecary Biologist fit into that niche. So say if you wanted that on the go for the Gladius Fire Discipline combo, so that could be one reason there. Otherwise though, not a terrible unit if you do want more anti-horde firepower. I would generally go with one of the others. I think they're worth the extra points for the damage upgrade though, if it's even. Next up, in 10th place, I've chosen to rank the Gladiator Reaper, the anti-infantry version of the Gladiator. This one's basically all about killing lighter infantry. Very strong damage against anything that's low toughness and low saves. And it spams out loads of shots between the Tempest Bolters and the Twin Heavy Onslaught Gatling Cannon plus Stobbers and Icarus pods besides. It gets sustained hits too against infantry units, and the Twin Links rule means that you could get quite a lot of devastating wounds even against things that aren't infantry, maybe making it a little bit more general purpose than some out there. It gets a bit better in Black Templars with the Bolt-on Multi-Melter rather than the Heavy Stobber, which makes it a little bit more general purpose and able to threaten heavy infantry and things. And it's maybe a bit more tempting than most in the Iron Storm Spearhead as well, with that stratagem to allow you to get critical hits on a 5 plus and then get sustained hits too for every one of those, maybe with lethal hits as well if you've got that enhancement nearby. 
Perhaps not the worst to have in that, as if you play against a very infantry heavy army, you could spend the damage boosting stratagem on this one rather than something that's good at taking down tanks or heavies. Overall it is basically fine if you want to add some dedicated infantry destroying fire support in the army. Though I feel like anything that's just good against killing infantry and not really good at killing stuff with high toughness does tend to be a bit niche. But perhaps one or two of these in an Ironstorm list that's got lots of stuff to handle heavy targets as well isn't the worst for a bit of balance in firepower. Next up in ninth place I've chosen to rank the Storm Speeder Thunderstrike. I potentially could have been persuaded to put this one a little bit higher. I feel like now we're really getting into the region of things that are run a bit more commonly competitively. The Storm Speeder Thunderstrike is the Storm Speeder variant that can hand out a plus one to wound against a monster or vehicle that it shot each turn, basically allowing a Space Marine gun line to really put a massive amount of hurt on one hard target from the enemy army. And it can contribute to some damage with some pretty accurate firepower as well, with missiles and a last talent hitting on a 2 plus. It is really quite pricey for those privileges though, at 160 points, and it is very fragile for the points cost, even more so than the other Storm Speeders given the price tag. It and the Storm Speeders might be fast, but they're also really quite big and not as easy to hide as you might hope for a fast attack type vehicle. If you do happen to be playing against enemy monsters or vehicles, then it's going to be a big deal. But if you're playing against an army that's gone very heavy on elite infantry or similar, it's just not going to matter quite as much, and you would have been better off with points than something else. For that reason, I wouldn't take more than one personally, but having one in the army to really punish enemy big tanks, vehicles, or heavy hitters seems like a fairly reasonable enough to me. Next in 8th place, I've chosen to rank the Repulsor Executioner, 220 points, and just a big chunky solid all-rounder that's fairly easy to use. Both top guns do have their targets that they're better against. I'd probably go for the heavy laser destroyer myself, as the rest of the tank isn't too bad at handling more light targets. And just for a raw damage comparison, it does do pretty well when weighed up against things like gladiator lancers, ballistas, dreadnoughts, or predator annihilators. Strong anti-tank damage, and then it does have the option of turning all that anti-infantry fire on other targets. It has a small transport capacity, which could be handy enough to get a five-man squad out to do other things. I'd see that as a secondary benefit as opposed to the main one. Maybe ops its value a little bit in Firestorm, perhaps. Overall, I'd rate it solidly usable, if maybe a little bit all eggs in one basket. If the opponent does have just some enormous long-range anti-tank firepower, this could find itself gone down really quite quickly. And I'd say the special rule is a bit of a letdown, as it's rarely going to trigger, as it's basically a bonus to its damage if you're firing against something that's below half strength, which is a little bit on the niche side. Otherwise, with detachment things, it's quite nice in Ironstorm with the big rerolls on the laser destroyer, plus it's a pretty nasty unit to use that sustained hit stratagem on. And again, as with the rest of the impulses and gladiators and things, it does get better in Black Templars, as bonus multi-melters are fun in place of a heavy stubber. In 7th place, I've chosen to rank the Vindicator, a tank that since the Codex has come out, seems to be actually getting some good competitive play, appearing in top lists in Ironstorm Spearhead. Prior to this, it was kind of rarely taken, though it did have its advantages. Seems that the small nose-down in points and the Ironstorm special rules are enough to get people sold on it. The Vindicator has strong close-range anti-tank damage that is fairly general purpose, D6 plus 3 shots at strength 14, AP3 and damage D6, and having the blast keyword makes it a little bit more general purpose than some other things, as you get more shots against big massed up elite infantry and things. Otherwise, its durability is okay with the 2 plus save, with cover and armor of contempt as options, it doesn't take any penalties for firing in engagement range, and can also fire blast weapons there, and it is something that you could just credibly just keep in combat and deal out some enormous damage, making locking it up with elites may be a questionable idea. For the downsides, it is fairly pricey at 190 points. It can be quite swingy with D6 plus 3 damage and D6 damage rolls. Both of those could have the potential to let you down quite hard. And compared with some other options, it's a little inflexible with less option to divide fire, and a 24-inch range can limit its target choice as well. As mentioned, I think it's far stronger in the Ironstorm Spearhead compared with elsewhere, otherwise I feel like it's just not really very standout. It's good for that Mercy as Weakness stratagem with sustained hits on a 5+, plus, perhaps being a particularly good target for that given that it doesn't want to split fire as other tanks might want to anywhere near as much. It gets on pretty well with the rerolls too. In 6th place, I've chosen to rank the Standard Repulsor, 190 points for a really big, chunky and fairly dangerous transport. And it's got a big transport capacity and a very good supporting rule. Its durability per point I think is solid. 16 wounds at toughness 12 even if it is just with a 3 plus save is great for 190 points. 
It will take a fair bit of focused firepower to bring down, and it is covered in a fair few different guns, between a twin links last cannon, a heavy onslaught Gatling cannon, and a whole cluster of defensive array type shots, it should make its presence felt as it transports things around the board. Currently I'd say that this one is perhaps the transport of choice for range damage dealers, things like hell blasters, eradicators, or maybe aggressors that are really going heavy on the shooting options for them. Maybe even in furnace marines in the firestorm detachment, this guy can move up the board, put down a big squad and open fire on the enemy, and then protect the unit from being charged as they can re-embark in the enemy turn when the charge is declared. Really quite a big deal that should in theory allow the squad to survive the turn and fire again, and should be able to even if the repulsor is destroyed. As for weaknesses, the damage output isn't standout, but I guess that's only part of its purpose. I think between its durability and damage it does enough to justify itself alongside its transport role, and otherwise it is competing with land raiders a bit. Generally speaking, I'd say that they're the ones that you want to go for if you want to deliver melee units into combat, the repulsor being better for ranged things, but I think they're still really quite viable. This one does seem absolutely standout strong for the Firestorm detachment, not bad in plenty of the others like Gladius or Ironstorm, and again gets better in Black Templars with a bolt-on multi-melter. Next up, and for 140 points, we've got the Ballistas Dreadnought. The new gun turret Dreadnought from Leviathan had its points cost slashed in the Codex, and it is now perhaps one of the standout tough Space Marine vehicles for the cost. A 2 plus save and 12 wounds on this cheap chassis is great, more so if you can get cover, which shouldn't be too hard, plus also you've got the option of Armour of Contempt as well. Its damage output maybe isn't quite as punchy as a few of the other long-ranged anti-tank type options, but given that it's quite so tough, that's maybe not the biggest issue in the world. It's still got long-range threats that can handle heavies, and the missiles can swap to a frag mode if you want to put some hurt on one wound infantry, and they're the targets that have presented themselves. Its reroll hit rolls against units that are greater than half strength will trigger more often than not, and it means that you could use Oath for something else and not this guy, which perhaps isn't the worst, does mean that he can't benefit from that most of the time though. Perhaps the biggest weakness is, is that he's not quite as just outright dangerous as some other things on offer. In particular, the strength 10 missiles don't do a lot against things that are toughness 11 or more, making him worse than the Gladiator Lancer against those kind of targets by quite a margin. He does seem to be stand out good in the Ironstorm Spearhead though. Again, he really likes the built-in re-rolls that you get, which he can save for a wound roll or a damage roll most of the time. And he really likes the aura of lethal hits that the enhancement from a tech marine can give you. That makes the missile far more impressive against tougher stuff, and you could potentially even re-roll all hits with that trying to fish for the lethal ones against tough targets. Overall pretty solid and hard to go too far wrong with I think. Next up we've got the Armoured Might of the Land Raider, which is kind of refreshing to have them so high up this vehicle list compared with 9th edition where I was constantly saying that they're one of the worst units that Space Marines have. It's definitely a lot more fitting that they're an exciting unit to have in the Space Marine motor pool. I already talked about the Crusader, and as mentioned there, I feel like the Redeemer or the regular Land Raider are the ones to go in preference, though it just depends on exactly what kind of squad you need to transport, and whether you need the extra slots that the Crusader has on offer. As with the Crusader, they're big tough, have a 2 plus save that loves armour of contempt, and perhaps enough points investment to justify stratagem use on, if you've got some good damage dealers that will be relevant. Their main niche is to deliver melee things into combat with their assault ramp, Move 10 inches, drop them out the front 3 inches and then go on to charge means that slow units like aggressors or blade guard veterans could easily get into combat. Then I'd say their damage output is far more general purpose than the Crusaders is. The Redeemer with its flamestorm cannons just barbecues elite infantry rather nicely, plus is an enormous overwatch threat. And the Godhammer Laz cannons are slightly cheaper, but I think it's very hard to go wrong with 4 big Laz cannon shots for some focused anti-tank particularly on a vehicle that's going to be moving up the board quite so fast, as they might be able to get some line of sights on things that might otherwise be somewhat hidden. For downside, being big models, they're going to be hard or impossible to hide, particularly as they want to be not having to move around terrain as they move up the board, will mean that they're likely to be bearing the brunt of enemy attacks, but I think they do have just enough raw built-in durability with their toughness 12 to not really mind too much about that, you need to have some serious firepower to be averaging one of these dead per turn at long range, particularly if it's in cover and can threaten the armour of contempt. Otherwise, maybe the biggest downsides are the transport capacity. The regular one only has a transport of 12, which means that that could be a problem for, say, aggressors with an attached character. That would mean that you need to go for the Redeemer, and as mentioned before, if you want aggressors with two attached characters, you'd be looking at the Crusader. 
otherwise pretty nasty for them, and really quite good with things like Blade Garb with loads of attached characters like Ajax Agatone, or Marnius Kalgar and his entourage, or perhaps even delivering some Assault Centurions into battle, which do have some fairly fearsome damage output if he can get them up close. I feel like these work pretty well with Salamander's armies as well, Vulcan Hestar and allowing the Flamestorms to reroll wound rolls potentially is pretty nasty. Next up, and in third place, I've chosen to rank the Space Marine artillery piece that is the Whirlwind, 145 points, and with Desolation squads being kind of nerfed into the ground, these guys seem to be fulfilling the role of Space Marine in direct fire, with quite a nice generalist profile that can take any buffs going quite well. The Vengeance missiles get you d6 plus 3, strength 8, AP 2 and damage 2 shots, a profile that remains quite relevant even if the enemy does get cover and it's minus 1 to hit, and he can potentially use Oath of Moment for some big focus fire, even affecting multiple whirlwinds to blast a squad off an objective. It doesn't need to expose itself to enemy firepower and can stay hidden behind terrain, so that's quite nice for not having to worry too much about defence, though in some situations if the opponent can't kill it easily at range it might still make sense to nose out of terrain to fire that hunter-killer missile if it makes sense. Otherwise it gets on very nicely with some detachments, perhaps particularly the Iron Storm Spearhead for competitive play, lethal hits from the aura from the Tech Marine could be big for that, never mind getting plus one to hit with one of them. I have seen a couple of lists that go heavy on these and take three with that sort of formation, just giving you some very very scary indirect firepower. Pretty comfortably deleting one enemy unit per turn off the map might be big for destroying enemies primary scoring. Otherwise it does trigger a Battleshock test for any enemy infantry hit, which a lot of the time won't matter too much in your own shooting phase, but occasionally it can be relevant for you scoring things at the end of your turn, or maybe enemy secondary objectives occasionally. It's quite nice in the Anvil Siege Force as well, as it's going to be static for the plus one to hit, and if you do have any of the Space Marine Firepower buffing units then it will certainly appreciate that. If you can get line of sight on the targets to be deleted with Incursors, Storm Speeders, or to mark an objective with the combi weapon lieutenants, then those missiles get yet another level of savagery. For downsides, its damage output isn't realistically all that strong, it does pay an expected premium for its indirect fire, so it's going to be most helpful against things that either are really fragile and valuable and your opponent really doesn't want to have destroyed, or destroying low investment objective holders that would usually be safe just by not being exposed to enemy shooting. They're also not really that big a threat against 2 plus saves or toughness 9 plus without additional buffs going off, and the your turn Battleshock tests its hands out generally aren't all that meaningful, though just every so often they could be big if they stop a stratagem or something else. Still though seem to be in a good place, not auto include good, but handy enough for a small amount of indirect fire that can be game changing in the right situation. Next up, the unit I've chosen to rank in second place is the Redemptor Dreadnought. Certainly a strong all-rounder Space Marine unit that absolutely does get play in competitive lists, though I think I would caveat the top two choices that have ranked here and say that I don't really think that they're enormously stronger than the last five or so units that I've mentioned, or really quite competitive units that see frequent play. The Redemptor is definitely a really easy to use and pretty dangerous model though, it's got good durability with its minus one damage, meaning that it's great against damage two and damage three weapons, and a 2 plus save with Armour of Contempt as an option and cover means that they can be just very annoying to kill for enemy units. You could even have AP-3 things saving on a 3 plus. Its range damage output is fairly general purpose. I probably prefer the Macro Plasma overall, though I have seen the Heavy Onslaught Gatling Cannon used occasionally. Big anti-elite firepower plus a flurry of lighter shots as it stomps up the board, being very tanky and potentially threatening charges with its big strength 12 and damage 3 melee profile. It could also tank shot with that for extra damage if needed. Being pretty capable in combat as well as just being generally strong might make it a bit more tempting for any Space Marine detachments that go heavy for melee things, perhaps ones with a bunch of stratagem options like Blood Angels, Black Templars or Space Wolves. Otherwise it's just generally quite easy to use and flexible, a good expensive target for use of stratagems, and seems pretty well rounded to use as a frontline Space Marine vehicle, stomping up the board to deal heavy damage. For weaknesses, its range damage I think is good but not really standout. It definitely takes a small hit there due to its melee capable profile plus its durability, maybe making it a jack of all trades and master of none, and not being as much of a threat to things with toughness 10 or higher due to macroplasmas capping out at strength 9. With minus 1 damage that doesn't tend to be anywhere near as meaningful against very high damage things, say things like Drukari Lances with d6 plus 2 or enemy gladiator Lancers. I said I think it is solid enough, definitely a competitive unit, though I do feel like the top end of Space Marine vehicles are fairly well balanced, not enormously ahead of any of the last five or so choices. 
Finally, and perhaps still retaining its crown as one of the best and easiest to use Space Marine vehicles just for slapping enemy tanks dead from across the board is the Gladiator Lancer. Again, kind of similar to the Redemptor, I have chosen to rank this first here as I think it's great for its role and kind of remains great regardless of detachment that it's in. It certainly could have better value out of a bunch of the other top choices depending on detachments and things. If you do have a Space Marine list that just needs to be a bit more threatening to enemy vehicles and heavy hitters though, including one or two of these if you can find the kit for them, it really isn't the worst idea. In a math comparison I did for best Space Marine anti-tank damage dealers, it does pretty much come out the best at long range. It gets a strength 14, AP minus 4, damage D6 plus 3 laser destroyer with 2 shots. It gets to re-roll a single hit roll, wound roll and damage roll, which just adds up to some amazing consistency that doesn't really need oath a moment. And anything without either an exceptionally high save and cover or a good invulnerable save is almost certainly going to be taking a lot of wounds worth of damage. It averages around about 10 wounds per round of shooting to, say, a standard sized vehicle with a 3 plus save and no invulnerable. Otherwise, just for repelling threats to the deployment zone, it does have a few anti infantry type shots with some storm bolters, stubbers, and an Icarus pod. Gets a 2 plus to hit with the heavy keyword if it's stationary, though I feel like given the re-rolls it's still not the worst idea just to be moving it around to get line of sight and things. Hitting on 2 plus is nice if you can have it, but definitely not essential. It definitely does have weaknesses though, it's a little less tough for the cost compared with say the Ballista's Dreadnought or Repulsa Executioner, so ideally wants to be one of the tanks that's a bit further back I think and not taking the absolute brunt of enemy firepower. It's also less general purpose than some options, if you're not playing against an army that's got any tanks or vehicles in, then it's going to be a bit sad. So again, you probably only want to go so heavy on these, I think one or two is absolutely fine. I might be a little bit wary of going for a full three of them though, not unless the rest of the list is just very geared towards destroying infantry and nothing else. Otherwise, high and vulnerable saves can be a problem for this one as well. It could be a good target for enemy command point rerolls to get a lot of value out of it, given that they could be cancelling a damage attack that's enormously high. Again, I think it's an absolutely great little tank for the cost though, regardless of detachment choice. Though again, given that it's quite specialised, I wouldn't realistically rank it much or any higher necessarily than the last few choices that I've mentioned. There's lots of things that do have great advantages in the right armies. So anyway, let me know what marine vehicles have been seeing table time for you. Look forward to hearing all your thoughts and ideas down in the comments below. And are there any things in this list that you would have ranked a bit higher or lower? Look forward to hearing any thoughts and feedback as always. If you'd like to check out the infantry version of this video, then I'll leave that linked in the video description below, talking through all the Space Marine infantry units and some of the positives and negatives, so feel free to check that out if you'd like. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that All Specs Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that linked in the video description if you'd like to help support and keep these videos coming. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, an enormous thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.